Free run episode 25. Fern can do it. Bold. We were not really surprised. That was a recap except for the flash of Siri. What does that mean? This is just a guess, but maybe when Siri first met Free Rin, she was a little bit intimidated, though she also seemed a bit excited. It feels like there's something a little bit insecure about her in regards to Free Rin and their first interactions. Fern, in a way, is to Free Rin what Free Rin is to Flam, except there's a lineage thing, right? There's a progression of character development. Free Rin being Free Rin, being, you know, sort of this whole person, for the most part, would be happy to have a pupil surpass her. A very willing passing of the torch. Episode 25, A Fatal Vulnerability. I'm so curious. What is Freerun's weakness? The replica does not have a mind. That will not work. Oh, they're about to find out. Hello. It does not have a mind. Everyone is dead. He didn't make it. Oh, good. Damn, what a hero. Give this guy a mage license, for God's sake. <laughs> Give them all mage licenses. Come on now. I mean, at this point, don't you all just use the flask? Why bother running out? It's just a license! <laughs> okay, alright. It's a license that we need. わしは初めからそのつもりだった。<笑> I think this is critical information. I think the question is, when was the copy made? If the copy is made from their entrance into the dungeon and it's a static thing and unchanging and they can't learn, that is already an edge because even though a short time has passed, you're capable of growing and thinking. And this is information you're developing that your counterpart does not have. In that way, it actually does make some sense why someone other than Freerun might have the best chance of defeating Freerun. Unless Freerun can come up with a new blind spot that she's always had all this time right this second. The best strategy is something that Freerun didn't know at the time the copy was made. I'm trying to think how I would beat myself. I mean, I know my own weaknesses and I know how I could be defeated. I guess I would count on the fact that my copy wouldn't necessarily be thinking about the meta strategy that I wouldn't have been thinking about when the copy was made. Though, it's tough, I could still adapt, I still think. That's true, theoretically, if you can get to the source, you wouldn't even need to take on the clones. And we have history here. Wow, that's very personal. Is that how that went down? Yeah, that is how it went down, isn't it? I think I said that. That's something to put down our history. Okay, no way out. Alright, there goes that. Very Hunter Hunter. It doesn't seem to get any weaker either from having multiple clones. Like, you'd think the mana would be spread out. What are the weaknesses of a mind? And we each would know that better than we ourselves would know that. Or we know that best about each other more than we'd know that about ourselves, most likely. How much has Fern thought about fighting Freerun? I mean, she definitely knows her behaviors and patterns and probably knows her weaknesses. <laughs> Careful what you say, she might get offended. This could be sensitive. Imagine if you and your friends had a common goal, and the only way to achieve it was for you to stand against the wall and for your friends to just rail at you. All of your worst qualities, and all of your failings, and all the, the things that they really think about you that they never say. The roast of Freerun, in a way, with magic. Magical roast of Freerun. Obviously, Freerun defended that, yeah. She broke a piece of her guard. Thankful saw it. She used the minimum amount she needed, like she only guarded where she absolutely had to. Oh, okay. 
I'm listening I'm right here. Okay, she's humble. That's not a lot. Yeah, it's not great. It's not this huge gaping weakness. Fern could. Fern is the only one probably who can shut off her mana to that extent. I mean, if I'm interpreting it correctly. I'm thinking that Fern sort of slips in unnoticed, masking her mana, and then unleashes it at the exact moment Freerin drops her detection. <laughs> why do why do we get the traveling the wagon traveling montage music? Is this a sweet moment? Ah uh, yes, the adventures we have fighting clones of ourselves. This is the journey that we have to enjoy. It's not the clones of yourself that you kill. It's the discussions you have about killing your own clone along the way. That's what I'm saying. It's a little bit odd. Been a while since a proper challenge. What is this? Oh, okay, it's flashback. It's the collaboration. It's the collaboration you have along the way. <laughs> I feel like every day was a, a day off for Hyder. They just all let it slide. Whoa, that was amazing. We don't. We haven't seen him fight that much. Yeah, yeah. If only you had that luxury in games. You, you don't know the, what the boss is usually. Until you die once or, you know, a hundred times. She's awfully calm. That is true. Coincidentally, so is the clone you're about to fight. She definitely believes. Oh, just the two of them. Both. But the fewer meat shields you have. How do you feel as this group of people? Do you feel relieved or disappointed and weak? Do they really anticipate the battle to take that long? That's true. You guys are the guard. Alright. In Freerun we trust. And Fern, I guess. Divided by ego, united by Freerun's danger. Smart. This is something the clones wouldn't have, this discussion. Fern uh, looking absolutely ready. At the same exact moment. <laughs> they both know the important target. Whoa, this is so boss battle. That angle. <laughs> That's so cool. O okay. I mean, oh, there's. I just thought of it. There's one advantage the clone has that Freerun doesn't. The clone isn't the main body, so the clone doesn't matter. It's kind of like chess. If you're already ahead in the matchup, you're perfectly fine exchanging queens. Or like how in the original Pokemon Red and Blue, before there were any rules on who you could use, pretty much all good strategies were designed around being the first person to kill your opponent's Mewtwo. Right there, both of them being crushed by that rock is probably acceptable. Or the Diamond Spirit thing. <laughs> Leave it to Fern. <laughs> That's such a cool thing to say. Yeah, Fern is the one. They're fighting in the background. Interesting. That's an edge Fern has on Freerun. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, is this, this is a bizarre thing to be sweet, but it's really sweet. You could kill me, Fern. It's the greatest compliment Fern could have gotten. If you're like a, a half millisecond too late. Yes, perfect time for a flashback. I thought you didn't like Freerun. What is her deal? She seems really torn up about it. Okay. I would totally have read it. Mahono 
Flam was a real dreamer, like a real future thinker. There are so many things that she foresaw. Maybe Flam is a representation or fits into that idea about how your legacy isn't necessarily your name. From what I've seen so far, Flam doesn't at all seem to be the kind of person to seek attention or glory or statues or whatever, but she definitely had a vision and she definitely cared very deeply and had a, a strong moral sense, was very heavily invested in the world and people. Seems like she did everything she could to leave a legacy of, of action and service rather than cultivating an image. This could go wrong. Not hard to see the dangers of this. And I will no longer be special. Shocking. <laughs> I don't feel like that's where I was going. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could definitely understand the culture of this exam thing now. It's not about you. Oh, damn, and she had your number. She knew who you were. Ouch. Who's special now? Oh, damn, that after death in your face. You are my granddaughter, in a sense, after all. What are you getting at? Did a little boy just run by? Flowers. Oh, this flam. Flam. <laughs> I, I want to believe that Siri liked, loved Flam more than she's letting on. I mean, given what we know about the elves, it, it's not inconceivable that they have this sort of defense mechanism about not getting too attached to people. I mean, I think it's that very thing that Freerun is starting to undo now. I also get the feeling that it's not really magic that they love. I mean, they love magic, but magic is not the source. It's sort of a, a limb on the tree. Like a lot of people in a lot of different fields, it's their way of connecting with sort of the universal. Some people get there through music and art, sport, achievement, relationships, what have you. We've seen and heard a few times from people who are really great at magic, and obviously care about magic a great deal, that magic is just sort of okay. It's so-so. It's a thing that I do. It's because there's different meanings and interpretations of what the magic really is. I see this everywhere these days. I mean, the way I previously explained it is from the Bruce Lee movie where he points to the moon and the student looks at his finger and he says something like, don't look at the finger pointing to the moon. Just in so much of life, there's source and there's signal of source. And I think the, the level of depth and importance, perhaps, and inherent beauty will vary based on how close it is to the source, how much you're using the signal as a mirror of the source of what's truly important. It seems like so far, Siri might be an example of like pure finger, you know, like she loves magic for just the technicalities of it, the power it gives her, being able to defeat people, feeling like she's special or better than other people, that she's in a privileged class, this sort of ego-driven material layer of the thing, as opposed to like the deeper, richer, universal, beautiful life source that magic reflects. And yet... It's a huge legacy. She knew who she was and what she wanted. From that perspective, every moment in a human's life is important. How long do they live, damn? That long, huh? You'd think there'd be more of them in that case. Damn, <laughs> Yeah, that happens, especially with magic. Is that what it is? Is it fear? Fear <laughs> makes it look so effortless. Is sort of happening right now, but a clone. Freeran contributed to it. Right, this is the sort of pure love thing. It's not selfish, it's not competitive. Oh yeah, this fight. <laughs> I was so engrossed in the flashback. <laughs> and here is Fern killing Freerun in a way. Goodbye. Get old hearts. That was surprisingly easy. 
I mean, I guess with free rent, if you're fighting free rent, it has to be immediate or nothing. Your percentage of survival drops significantly with every passing second. The people outside maybe didn't even have to fight the clones. They can all get Zoltarks. Zoltark for Khan's clone, Zoltark for Levine's clone, Zoltark for Denkin's clone. You'll get Zoltarked. I mean, now they can just break the seal and destroy the crystal thing, right? Zoltark the crystal. Someone's getting Zoltarked. To give credit to Siri, there's a part of her that feels classist, for lack of a better term. Coveting magic ability, not wanting it to be spread, all for me. But that's not all of it, right? There's definitely an excitement there to see what develops, what happens. She's not totally opposed to it. More like she doesn't feel the need or desire to play a role in it. It felt like in that conversation she did admire Flam to a certain degree. And I think she's not letting on the extent to which she cared. Nevertheless, I think there is something forming there about what is the nature of actually loving something, what really matters. And to zoom out to the broadest level, this is going to be true for just so many things in so many ways. Even knowing it, it's hard to get at. Like you look at your own desires, you look at the things you want and covet. Those are almost definitely ways your mind is convinced you can shortcut or touch the surface of the deeper thing that you want. And probably that's several layers deep. So like, for example, you want a lot of money, but actually it's not money. It's the things you think money can get, being able to affect outcomes so that you can get things you most covet. But then what do you covet and why do you covet them? For some people, it might be something like acceptance. You want other people to accept you. Well, why do you want other people to accept you? You want to feel like you're safe in the world. You want esteem that you don't know how to give to yourself. So you've attached a value to another people. So you want your own esteem reflected back through others. But really it's the esteem you want. And none of these pursuits are bad. I think they all are steps there. But then there's always this question that's kind of fun, which is, could I just skip all this and go there directly? Maybe the answer is no. Maybe part of the path there is the, the journey itself. Maybe you have to go through those steps to really get it authentically. Nevertheless, the, the deeper, richer that North Star, the less easy it is to get stuck on sort of the periphery, the, the insubstantial. Mm -hmm.